We are in our activated India mine. I've done a few changes since we last saw each other. First of all, I've completed a circle of storage. We now have the ability to store up to 5,250 activated indium, which is 14 million and 400. Well, it's not really. It depends what we're going to get when we sell it, which we're going to test now in a second. But the biggest thing, I don't need the batteries anymore. I moved them around at first, but then I figured out how to finally do that base expansion thing that I was talking about. And for some reason, it didn't work uh, during the stream, but Basically, all you do is you build at the edge of your buildable area and then you keep building out, building out, and it keeps expanding, expanding, and it works. Yeah, it's just for whatever reason, I did it wrong and it didn't work at the time. But what we have now, we have our power supply coming from all the way up the mountain. So you can see the cables going all the way through here. I built little walls and I connected it to the walls, just down, down, down. It's coming all the way down from the hill. And I don't think we're gonna be able to see it actually because I just arrived in the teleport and it removes the hotspot icon, but it is coming from all the way up there. Oh, hello there. I might as well scan you quickly. There you go. There's a couple of hundred units. Thank you. Hundred thousands. I also added a couple of more of those um, miners. So we now have, I think five, which is 1,250 storage coming just purely from the miners. And then we have 14, supply depots down here which are perfectly in a circle so they don't go through the roof basically because we didn't want them to go clips through the roof and it looks perfect it, it is an, a horrible base i know it's an absolute awful base but for a little test activated indium mine this is perfect so let's take all the indium out see if i have the room i should have the room in my exosuit and um, for all of that between the cargo slots and this i it should all fit in so let's take it all out there we go. Put it into, actually put it into high capacity storage and in our exosuit. Now this will take only eight and a half hours to fill up again for another approximately 14 million. So which means you theoretically can get it at least three times a day. And uh, that means it's 30, 42 million in 24 hours, which is not bad for a mine, which is only using five miners and is in an awful hotspot. It's like a B hotspot and the power comes from a C hotspot. So that is not bad at all for free money. Now we could sell it here on the terminal, but the problem with this is that activated indium, if we sell it right now, we get uh, 12.4 million because the demand is dropped to uh, 14 by 14%. 14 but then the demand will drop even further. So the more we sell, the less money we get. So what we want to do is we want to really bring this to one of the base stations, uh, space stations uh, to a scrap dealer. I think they don't operate like the terminals, like you can sell infinitely to them and it doesn't really change. And if, if so, we're gonna check one of the pilots and then we're also gonna check um, the scrap dealer and see what the prices are that they give us. Now I'm here in the space station that actually is in the same system as my farming uh, planet. So let's see what we're gonna get. I actually don't wanna sell to him straight away to the scrap dealer because I wanna see if we get more money going to a three star system or if that makes absolutely no difference. And we also need to check the price, of course, uh, from the pilots, as I said. So let's go and check out what we get from the scrap dealer. It should be better than minus 14%. So if we go to sell, let's have a look at the activated indium. It's only minus 3.5. So here we would get 13.9 million um, from him. But let's check out the pilots and then we're gonna check out a three star system. Here we go, we have a pilot coming in. I don't think it matters what class ship they're flying. So let's see what he has to offer. Let's sell to you and see what we would get. So he also is minus 3.5. So minus 3.5 seems to be the standard for anything that isn't connected to any of the terminals. So let's head over to three star system quickly and see if we get a better deal there. Here we go. We have an opulent system, which is a three star system. So let's see what we're going to get here. Okay, here we go, Mr. Scrap Dealer. Tell me what an opulent system might offer us. Now, I might be getting this wrong because I know there's also statistics on the galactic map where you can see what the drape modifiers are, but I don't know exactly if they're tied to the, to the star system, as in three stars or not. But we'll see. We could be getting a worse price maybe even here. 
So activated in here, minus 2.1. So this is the 14.1 million. This is the best we can get right now. Um, I'm happy with that. That is as close as we could get, minus 2.1. But again, next time I'm going out to the galactic map, I'm having a look and see if it always is the case that a tier three system will always have the best uh, trade bonus. Because if you go out, you can see on the map, actually, which you can't see here, oddly enough, um, on the system, is the bonuses to the trade. So this is what I was talking about. You can see here the buy is at minus 10.3, which is very good actually, because most of the other systems, if you look at them, they have like minus 18 or minus 19, but it seems that it doesn't matter too much if it's a two star or a three star, because this one is minus 10.7 and it's a one star. So maybe keep an eye on that. And if you find a planet system where the buy is like say zero, or even plus, which would be amazing, then you might even make more money. The moment of truth. All the rejigging we did, was it worth it? So if you remember, we had that issue where Starbook was just like, wow, only giving you like 42 per plant instead of 84, I think, which is the standard. So it seems that for a lot of the plants, we got 84. For some, we got uh, only 42, which was the star bulb. And then for the cactus, we got like 168. So it was like double the norm and uh, star bulb was half. So we rejigged everything. I have absolutely zero of any of those things in my inventory, um, which means all the plants that we're gonna get are gonna be purely from what we harvest here. So we are not able to make any um, circuit boards right now. So let's see what we're gonna get. Now we are going to get a little bit extra frost wards because I planted more, but let's go and get the selenium. So this one here is 1008, which is perfect down to a T because we want 2,000. So here we're gonna get another 1,008. Perfect. So now here we have 2,000 selenium. And for the 2,000 selenium, we need uh, 1,000 frost ward, which I think I've moved, oh yeah, I moved the frost ward up here on that side. Let's go in here, there we go. And that should give me 1,000, well, 1,176. We did plant one or two plants extra purely because, you know, because of glass and living glass and all that. So we wanted some extra. But right now I should be able to make 10 uh, heat capacitors. Perfect, it's exactly 10. And after we made that, that is what we have left. Now again, frost crystals intentionally, we have left over more. But selenium only 16. That's it, because they drop at 84, so it was the closest I could get to was 1008, basically. Let's go and get the star bulb. For that, hopefully we're gonna make 2000 now as well. Now we should have three of those, which means 672, 672 again. There you go. And another 672 over here, so that might actually not be enough. Oh, wow, okay, so because we want 2000, so let me just have a look here. 600, oh no, that, that could be enough. So let's have a look and see how much we have. We have 1,000, 2,000, nice, 2,016. That is perfect. So that's exactly what we needed. And now we're gonna go over to the cactus flesh, which I have um, three here, four, five, six here, which should be exactly enough. But of course, uh, we also have the frost ward. So we're gonna get extra frost ward now, which is 672, but we also get 1008 cactus flesh so it worked out exactly right so now we should also be able to make 10 polyfiber oh five polyfiber why is that cactus flesh 500 star bulb 1000 okay that is really weird let's maybe we got it now oh you can only craft five at a time giving me a heart attack okay so that was weird <laughs> okay yeah Whew. Wow. Okay, so now we have some extra frost ward. But again, if you look at, uh, besides the frost ward, uh, beside the frost crystals, we only have little minor things left. So we have the figures down exactly right, which is really good. And now we can take this and we can make 10 circuit boards. Bam, there we go. And these 10 circuit boards are gonna give us 4.5 million each, which is 9 million. And we're gonna go to our special trader in a second where we're gonna sell them. Now let's sell those babies to our scrap dealer friend here in the three star system. 
9.2 million. So they're actually plus 1% demand. That is amazing. So we even get more than the um, usual price. So if we sell it for 9.2, that means 14, 9.2, we made 23 million just now in very little time. It actually took me more time to talk about this than to make the money. So that was really, really good. This is an absolute amazing little passive way of making money. Now, again, all this, what I'm doing right now is very minimal. It's not really doing anything with a huge expansion in mind, but we're gonna change that in regards to the circuit boards very soon because um, one of the things or a few things that you can craft later on to make even more money, um, you need circuit board for, boards for as well. So we might as well get farms up, upgraded right now to generate those components as we go along. And then later on at end game, we hopefully have all these little farms that we need to make um, the hugely massive expense of products. Well, the biodome is really amazing and you just have to click on one of those tablets that are hanging from the ceiling and everything gets collected. It's very hard to expand because you have to build more biodomes, more biodomes, more biodomes, and you probably run out of room. So you guys mentioned that I should be building hydroponic farms on my freighter. That's what we're gonna do. So we're gonna move our circuit production to our freighter now that we know exactly how many we need for everything. And we're going to double it up as well. So we need to make a little bit of room here. I already started building some of these rooms out. There we go. And yeah, I also was told I have to be careful that whenever we're working on the freighter, um, which gives you a huge building area, of course, um, you need to save very frequently because it can happen that you will just fall through the floor if you build too big. So I have my little save point here and every time I do anything, I will just do a quick save so we don't lose anything and can do a manual reload. Now let's have a quick look and see um, the farms where we can place them. And we can build a lot of them because I've spent between this episode and the last one loads of time on getting all of the resources together. Well, the metal plating was just a matter of buying it, but everything else um, I was grinding for so that we can build 45 hydroponic farms. We want to be able to walk past it on either side. So if we put it, the first one here, let's see where this, um, oh, that's, oh, we can actually move it a little bit closer to the wall. Absolutely. Okay, so let's have a look. This is a good space. This is a good space. That is perfect. Nice. So let's build all the way across with maybe just one gap in the middle right here in the center and uh, see how many we can fit beside each other. They snap actually quite well, which is very nice. And will we fit one more? No, we're gonna leave this here free, probably starting on this side here, leaving the same kind of space. So let's see how many we have on this side. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Oh, that's great. So we can put about 14 beside each other. So we're going to leave exactly one space between them, which is the same width as a farm. So let's move this over here. There we go. And continue across here. So we're down to three, four, five, oh, six, seven. Oh, we will actually be able to put eight here actually moving everything a little bit closer to the center we were able to get eight on either side so that's 16 that is actually really really nice and we're gonna build an extra room on either side here quickly so we can actually walk around that as well build one here yeah beautiful there we go and then we can build another few rooms right here And I think that should be enough because if we have 16, that's 32. We only need 45. So we're probably going to stop there. We're not going to build this fully out. And yeah, let's put this here. Nice. And we're going to be leaving exactly one hydroponic farm space between everything so we can walk in between on either side, picking everything up very comfortably. Now in total, this will obviously take a little bit longer to collect all the resources than it does with the biodome, but I think it's way more extensible. Just need to expand a little bit more. And we're very lucky. I'm actually running out of silver and tritium. So silver, I had, uh, you know the way we collected all these um, bronze stones and all that weird stuff um, they actually turned into 250 silver each and I never threw them out because we needed some of them to actually um, build buildings in our settlement so I finally um, refined them all and we ended up with like 
8,000 silver or something, so which helps a lot building all these walls, because as you can see, it takes like 120 silver for each room. It doesn't take as much tritium, which is nice, So, but we are running low, so this should be enough space now. And here we are, 45, but we have exactly three more, so we might as well finish this and complete the row. Excellent, we just won't be using the last three. So this is absolutely awesome the way this is looking now. I love the way the light is hitting them. That looks amazing. What a massive hydroponic farm this is. I hope this all works out and we're not gonna start falling through the floor or anything. Now the next mission is to seed all of them, but of course we only have the seeds that we're gonna get at first from our biodome, which means we should get at least 10 ready to go and then from them we're going to keep the seeds instead of making circuit boards and we're going to make the next set of seeds so we can get the whole um 45 hydroponic trays fully covered i changed it a little bit around and i made it now so that one row left to right will be exactly for 10 circuit boards now that did mean for the cactus because we only need six seeds i have a full hydroponic farm and then two single ones i know you kind of can put a full one there and just make extra but i thought it looks nice if we have it perfectly set up so that it's extensible by exactly duplicating a row oh look at that we can see right into space oh please don't crash so basically what's going to happen is if we want to make 10 more circuit boards we're just going to replicate the row and another row and another row so this will purely be for circuit boards this area here if we want to make other things what we're going to do is we're going to make a corridor that goes down there and then starts building another farm for maybe living glass or other things who knows what's going to come up yeah there's a lot of things we can actually craft that we then in the end can put together including circuit boards into other recipes which make even more expensive things but um, we're talking about getting a gas farm and everything started but that's a different story so anyway for right now for this i think this setup works much better i have all my seats on me and what we have the way i have it divided is star bramble will go all the way down here so these 12 hydroponic uh, pods or trays are for star bramble because we need uh, for 10 circuit boards we need 12 trays completely filled then i'm gonna have my gap here to walk through and on this side we're going to have six trays of selenium then three trays of frost crystals and then we're gonna have the one tray plus the two mini trays of cactus flesh and that's the frost crystals done and all we have left now is the ec echino the cactus which we're gonna place six of there we go beautiful and this is now exactly all the seeds that we had in the biodome except in the biodome we were able to run around go click 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 and that was it we collected it all meanwhile here we're going to have to run around on all individual and hold down e and collect them which will make the collection take a lot longer but again we can expand this a lot easier than we can with the biodome it's a little bit more manual work. Now, if there is a way to automatically collect all these, that would be absolutely amazing. I don't know if that can be done. If there is something where you can just put another unit here or something say, hey, collect all of that. But, you know, I still like the idea of being able to expand it here, then building more domes and making this whole huge hullabaloo down in the base. The last thing we're gonna focus on today is what we're gonna do with the empty biodome next uh, to test out a couple of other things. And what we're gonna focus on is living glass. Now, I know this episode is gonna be shorter, but I wanted this episode to be condensed just around expanding our circuit board production, making money with the, or how much money we're gonna make with the mine and what we're gonna do next in our biodome and before we're gonna move that part once it's tested out into the freighter. Now, next episode, and that's why I wanna keep this short, I want to actually start with the Apollo quest line or continue the Apollo quest line, which I believe continues into another section of the game where we can't come back to our base because Apollo contact us and he says, hey, let me know when you're ready. You won't be able to get back to your base for a while. So I don't know what that exactly means, but I don't want to risk doing it right now, especially in this episode. So we're going to do that next time and focus con uh, completely on that. But right now, living glass, what can we do in the biodome for that? Now, living glass is made from five pieces of glass and lubricant. Now, glass is made from frost crystals. 
Um, so we need 200 frost crystals to make the five glass. And then we need one lubricant. The lubricant is made from 50 fecium and 400 gamma root. Now I already crunched some numbers and to get a nice even spacing right now, we're gonna focus on making four living glass at the same time. So that would mean for the frost crystals, we would need five times the amount which would be 10 frost wards, which gives us 840 crystals. It would make 21 glass, we have one left over. And for the gamma wheat, it means we would have to plant 20 gamma wheat, which would give us 1,680 gamma root, enough to make four living glass. And for the fecium, the fecium is again, the same problem as the star bulb. It only gives us 42 per harvest. So we're gonna need to make five fecium to get 210 or five uh, good rot flowers to get 210 fecium and we need 200 um, to make four pieces of uh, lubricant. This is the plan. Let's go put the seeds down and then next time uh, in 24 hours or whatever, when this is up, we're gonna be able to make four living class. Now living class, as you could see here, is worth 566 uh, units. So say about 500 units, if you can't sell it for um, the full amount, that is still 2 million just for four pieces of class. Now we expand that operation. We're gonna make like say eight every time or and then rows of eight. That could be very easily another big money maker. So this biodome actually works really well for the frost crystal and the fecium because we need 10 frost crystal um, plants and five good rot flowers, which give us the fecium. And there are 16 spots here with the stairs. So we have exactly 15 spots um, in here. So we're gonna plant 10 here nine and ten and then we're going to place five good rod flowers one two three four and five and that will give us exactly what we're looking for for the four living glass which is actually really good so if we keep them in the biodome that would be one biodome basically like just for that now with the gamma root we need 20 so we're going to split them between two biodomes because it's 16 in one and then it would be four in the other so we're just gonna put 10 here three seven and then we're gonna plant another three over here which means we have one side empty, but that's absolutely fine because we would have to split it over two anyway, but at least this way we can make them exactly opposite of each other, which works out really well as well. So there we go and plant another 10 here. There we go. And now we have exactly the amount we need of a gamma weed and good rot flowers as well as the frost wards and then next time this is ready i think that takes 16 hours for the gamma weed is it oh no that's four hours actually for the gamma weed um one hour for the uh, frost wart and for the good rot flowers it's four hours as well so theoretically you could do this every four hours and um, make a lot of living glass actually so we don't even need to wait a full day that's pretty cool all right and with this i'm gonna leave this episode here like i said this is gonna be a shorter one because i want to kind of condense it and focus it only on the whole expansion and money making next episode we're going to continue with the apollo quest chain and see what that brings us i'm kind of a little bit worried that it says you can't return to your base for a while um but hey a new adventure opens up which is great anyway i hope you guys had a good time with the episode and if you're new to no man's sky i hope this was very helpful to you as well to see all how we can do with the freighter how we can actually use that as a farm as well and again to anybody who left in the comments thank you very much for suggesting that i'm really liking that it looks really awesome as well have have all that many trays actually spread out in the freighters that's a lot of fun but anyway i hope it helped you had a good time and if you did remember to kick that like button in the balls and i hope i see you guys in the next video and if you're new to the channel and you like what you see hit that subscribe button see you guys next time until then as always huge pass and happy gaming